Shooting in the rain. Awesome. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle-Aged Gamer and this is the Seek Pro Force M17 gas blowback pistol manufactured by VFC. Now, before we get into this video, I want to make a huge shout out to my good friend Jay for lending me this pistol for the purposes of this review. And second, my actual relationship with this pistol, how do you say, has been, I've had two in my history. The first one was the Gen 1 batch, as you would call it, or batch one, back in 2019. And yeah, that one was DOA, didn't work properly, split slide out the box. So within an hour of purchasing it, it was back at the shop. The second one was about eight months later. I purchased another one from Dave's Custom at £50 more expensive, mind you, at this point. And that one worked and was awesome until I ended up getting rid before I started this channel, etc. So with that, I've had quite a fair few thousand rounds with it. I have a good opinion on what the M17 is, well, which is a great way to start this video. What is the M17? Well, the M17 is the Sig Sauer P320. It was a designation given to it for successfully completing and winning the trials or the XM17 trials back in 2012 when it started and finished around about 2016, 17, at which point Sig set up Proforce. Proforce being their subsidiary company that would deal with the licensing of this actual firearm and take all credit for everything, including its design. And obviously, they went out in 2017, contracted WE, received the prototypes of it. Basically, it was rubbish, and they sent them back, ordered a cease and desist. You can't make this pistol. WE did anyway and called it the F-17. Then... They went up to VFC and said, you've got six months to release a pistol. Here's the blueprints. Here's my design. Get on with it. And that's why, to this day, VFC still manufacture the pistol. Although, like everything, first batch in such a rush time was absolute garbage. So, with that being said, let's open this box and take a look at what the M17 is in Airsoft. So, their idea of Pro Force was to make a one-to-one -one replica for training its idea was to sell it to police and military for training because it's cheaper to shoot airsoft bbs than sim munitions and you don't have to accidentally putting a round in it and blowing each other's legs off i aka an alec bowl in moment so it's great for training if it gives you the feedback the same manual of arms and the same weight and feel before you actually get hold of the real one in your hand so it's a good idea. I agree with that. Airsoft is a good training purpose. Now, as you can see, you get a lovely box with SIG's name all over it. And let me see. As you can tell, you've got your um, VFC there, just to show you the manufacturer. Now, inside the box, you do get your magazine sort of slash instruction manual, which is in various languages. Speaking of, this would have been the M18, but I had to send that back due to the fact that for a 200 quid gun, going full auto randomly and having a dead trigger twice in a row, it's not a good idea, is it? So if you're going to get the P320, definitely get this version, the, the M17, the full size. Seems to be the one with no more problems anymore. So we get the gun, which, let's yeet that back out of the way. It's a beautiful looking gun, I'll give it that. It really is a beautiful looking gun and features quite some unique things so let's just put that aside here what else inside you should get your magazine while it falls out which is the extended mag again the military required a large capacity rounds i think if i remember rightly it was 21 rounds or 17 plus officially on the records this one holds 20 rounds plus one in the chamber or 21, if you believe the mark in here, which I don't believe anyone really got it in because it was so tight at the bottom and it would cause malfunctions with the slide, putting that 21 rounds in here and then one in the chamber, making 22. 
So they just generally put 20 in this and one in the chamber. So yeah, this one being the VFC, you have your fill valve at the back, which is really good, especially if you're into movie making, because it just looks realistic in that respect. Cool. And what was the other bit? There you are, your hop adjustment tool. And we'll get to the hop later on, it's kind of cool. So let's yeet this box out of the way. And let's have a look at this awesome pistol. Let's complete that picture. It is empty here. Check the chamber. Nothing in there. So let's complete that awesome picture. So, as you can see, you've got a nice extended mag with its little uh, serrations here for easy per or ease of purchase. And you've got your grip. Now the grip is hard to describe how this grip is. It's a complete part of the frame. It's not got any removable back straps, although if you do want to remove it, this one as you can see is stamped with the M. But um, if you do want to, I would say, make the grip bigger or smaller, you can actually buy the entire frame. And it's not as daunting as you think. We'll get to that in the second half when we take this down. Now, obviously, you've got the branding here on the side, six hour. You have your mag release, which is reversible. You can flip it to this side. That's kind of cool. You have your, how would you say, enlarged trigger well here, which is great for winter gloves. The trigger on this thing is awesome. So let's just remove that. And we slide that back. You have literally about a millimeter of play, and then you're at the wall. And if you move it, move it one millimeter, two millimeter and you broke past it and then you've got another there's the reset two mil back and you're back at the wall and reset it's almost just before the full reset which is kind of unique but it is quite nice it's about a five pound pull military spec as you would call it or give or take which is kind of nice um but yeah it's a really good I would say trigger on this, it's smooth, there's not that massive big snap which can lead you to jerk the weapon, it's kind of cool. You have your safety here, which obviously down is fire, up is safe. You can see the little red dot there. It is mirrored on both sides. And you have your, what I would call a Glock slide release, because that is basically what it is. It's an identical to what Glock use on theirs, minus the little nubby bit on the later generations, which are easier for just access. You have your takedown lever here. Moving forward, you've got your Picatinny rail with three slots, giving you multiple positions. And you have kind of like what they call half serrations here. Whereas here you have them mostly at the top. You have them here along with the markings of SIG. Let's bring that in for you. That's Sig Sauer M17. Now, they are only on the one side, sadly, but they are there. That's kind of good. You can see you have your metal front sight with a white dot, which is quite nice, easy to find. And yeah, the M18 and the M17 are virtually the same pistol, but the M18 ends here, so you lose about an inch of barrel length and guide rod length. And I was really looking forward to that. As I said before Christmas, I purchased my first one, which was from, um, if I remember rightly, it was JD Airsoft. And they sent me out one. It was dodgy, sent it back because it was on full auto. And then I got the next one from Fire Support, and they had exactly the same problem, and it's currently on its way back. So thanks to my good friend Jay for bringing me this one for review. He's awesome. And yeah, kind of cool. Now... On the top, you have your RMR plate cover. Now, for some reason, SIG with the early variants made the plate cover and the rear sight as one. But if you purchase the plate adapter, which you're going to need to strap an RMR to this, it will come with the little rear sights, as you would call it, so you can co-witness. Although you would need to replace the front as well, because that one is not like um, suppressor height sight. So, which you kind of need with the RMRs because they do sit slightly above and you won't see the front. You will the rear, but not the front. But um, that's entirely up to you. And like I say, that's a personal choice, I guess. Now, as you can see, your rear sights has the three red dots. They've replicated the striker rear plate, which is kind of cool. And you have your, I would say, extractor screw here. 
it is just for show. Don't try using it. I've seen so many people complain on the internet about it being a plastic piece or a metal piece that's not really a screw. Yeah, if you think that you're going to put an extractor on an airsoft gun, what's the point? Okay, now here you have your serial number and you have your, is that uh, Newington? And that's NHUS, so that'll be your address, which is kind of cool. And yeah, I think on the side here you have your 9x19. As you can see, there's your separate piece fire extractor, which, like I say, these are not connected, that's just for show. And it's just awesome. You can see the nice wear and tear where rounds have been put through this. It has been well used, and I put a lot of the rounds through it. It's kind of cool. It's a lovely gun to shoot, and it is a really good thing. And we'll get to that in the chronograph. Speaking of, let's take this out for chrono. Okay, I'm using green gas and 0.2 gram BBs. So let's check the FPS of this girl. I'm currently in a windy, rainy day. Uh, it's about six degrees outside. Okay, so what does that give us? A average of 336.6, which is not bad. Okay. So I'm going to take this back to 10 meters and see what the accuracy is like here on this target. So let's do that. Okay, so after 10 shots we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 10 on paper, it's 6 inch by 6 inch, so I would say that's about a 4 inch, maybe a little bit bigger, let me know in the comments below. Okay, something new for my channel, I purchased one of these little Texas stars and I thought it'd be kind of cool that whatever rounds are left in the mag after I've done the accuracy test, let's see if it can hit the... Texas start and clear it. Obviously, the more little panels we knock off, the better. There are currently seven shots left with one in the chamber. So that making a total of eight. We've got eight tries to do this. Let's do it. Bingo! Lock back on the last shot. Awesome. Okay, well that was a successful test. What do you think to that Texas Star? That was not bad. I forgot to say I backed it up to five meters. I know it's not that far for the first time. Wanted to give it a, a chance, plus it was raining. Get my excuses out the way. Um, but yeah, from now on I think 10 meters, you've got a two inch plate, which is kind of cool. Um, I think I have one right here. Yep, as you can see, it's a little two inch plate. They're kind of cool, magnetic plates, and they work. So, yeah, hopefully, you enjoy that target. Kind of will show how good these airsoft guns really are um, and how accurate they can be. If you can hit a two inch target, you're going to nail your uh, target in airsoft. So, that's kind of cool. So, again, let me know in the comments if you like that. Now, Let's get back to this pistol. As you can see, awesome gun. Locked back on the last shot. That was just classic me. Um, my luck, as they say. So, let's have a look. Now, taking the mag out, it's empty as you can see. Chamber is empty. So we're gonna leave it locked back. To take this down, it's quite simple. We just pull down on the takedown lever, drop the slide, and the entire slide will come off. Now we'll start with the grip. So frame assembly. So as you can see, this is a gorgeous thing. It's a lot cleaner now than it was before. 
you have your internal hammer which is there it's a nice curved hammer on this one just like the um, VP9 and you do have the nice roller there it can be easily reset and you've got your little see how to say firing pin reset there it's quite simple it doesn't require any other pin like some others like with glocks and that you usually get two pins one on this side for the trigger reset and that basically then locks the hammer etc you don't get any of that messing around with this it's just simply locks back and you've got the one C here your safety is here let you see fully ambidextrous in your traditional glock style of slide stop release now the cool part trick of this is like i said in the how would say beginning this gun is kind of a modular design so say for instance this grip is too small for you and you need a bigger one or a vice versa you need a smaller one you pop this pin out and you can lift the entire if we pull that up there and then grab the back and we lift that there just waggle it out this is your actual firearm in the real steel world you can ask sig themselves this is your actual registered firearm it is where your uh, serial number is right there everything else so the slide the recoil the barrel the firing pin everything else is how to say not a firearm according to them now to put it back it's quite simple he says and they'll make it more complicated now but no simply in click in and it's in and you're done it's that simple so if you do need a smaller slide, or a smaller frame, should I say, you can easily put that out. If this breaks in any way, you can do it. It's a really thick nylon fiber plastic. It has been sonic welded, so there is a slight seam going down there, which on SIG's own, they do do a better job of polishing it. But as this is not airsoft, they didn't need to, so they left it. So yeah, this is kind of cool. Now... The slide on the other hand, as I said, this is a guide hop design. As you can see, you've got your little cog here. So if you wanted to, you would adjust the guide hop by turning it. It is marked if I can find it for you. Whoop, let me, uh... there we go. Come on, focus, there it is. Oh, goes there. So you would just turn it anti-clockwise to ad hop and vice versa. But unlike the Glocks, you don't need to un do your hop you can leave it as it is and just pull this off out comes your captured guide rod and your barrel as you can see it's lovely and oiled and a bit wet from outside today with that lovely rain but yeah it's that simple your nozzle is standard nylon fiber nozzle with a 15 millimeter piston head in there that screw in the middle is what you would do to undo the plate here on the top and remove that so you want to fit an RMR. Although, do be aware, with this being a metal slide, fitting an RMR on it, it's going to affect cooldown and your reliability. So, just something to note for future reference. Because some people seem to think that, you know... RMRs are the cool way, and they are. They're really cool, and they're really good ideas. But it is an entirely subjective thing. To reassemble, we just do exactly the reverse. Put it back on here. And... Oh, oh safety's on, that's why. Oh, no. Did I do something wrong? No, I did not. Usual. Ah, there she goes. Clicked in now. Now, a good thing about finding out if this is indicated, if you look in the rear, you'll see a wheel. That means the hammer is back. When you don't, just there in that corner, you won't. If I do that, you can see the hammer wheel there, which will tell you it is loaded and ready. And that will tell you the hammer has been released. And there she is. That's all she wrote when it comes down to the M17. Funny bits aside, silliness aside, it's a really gorgeous pistol. This gun is absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's like one of those that I really do enjoy it. It's got a lovely kick, etc. Yes, I would say avoid the M18, the shorter version, because it seems to be one of the main 
culprits of error. Um, as you can see, you've got that module of fire control, which is supposed to be the same on both. But for some reason, the M18 seems to have more of a, an issue than the M17 at that point. And going through two in a row, it's not a good sign. But um, yeah, like I say, I do like it. I can see why the military went for it. Even though in the real steel, this has had quite a lot of problems and still ongoing, I believe. There are some police forces that are suing SIG because it's discharging the weapon even though it's unsafe. Um, the firing pin is still dropping forward under a knock or a bang or getting into the car and sitting down heavily is enough to shake it and make it fire. Um, even though the hands are not on the gun and not even touching it. And it's still not drop safe 100%. Although some people will say it is. But some don't. So I, again, I can't say if it's true or false. I just know that that's currently what's going on through the current legal system in the USA. Um, if you follow firearms, you should know this by now. Um, but yeah, that's typical SIG, as they say. But I would definitely get your hands on one if you want one, because they are really good. And like I say, that brings us to the end. If you've got this far in the video and you really like what you see, please like, comment and subscribe. You know, subscribe to the channel helps this channel grow and helps me put more cool guns on the table for you. Um, as there's quite a fair few rare ones, classic ones, and some new ones coming. So, like I say, as always, I've been the Middle Age Gamer, and you guys have been absolutely awesome. And I will see you in the next one.